Having stopped the fight between Tabarinan and Bombardiers and completed the digging of the trenches which had caused the argument, Joel and Frique the Dwarf are hurrying back towards the camp with the swift darkness closing in around them. Frique, delighted to find Joel again, is bouncing up and down with enthusiasm. But Joel is grave. He is anxious to see Marshal Crecy as soon as possible and is horrified when the dwarf tells him that the marshal is away from camp. Knowing what he does of enemy plans, Joel realizes the seriousness of such a situation. But the lives of 30 good men and the capture of Freiburg depend upon my seeing the marshal this very night, Frique. But he is not here, my dear Joel. Where is he then? He is up in the Vosges Mountains, supervising the digging out of wagons and ammunition which are stuck in the mud there. You see, even the marshal himself is not above a little digging now and then. Whatever these high and mighty cavalrymen may say. Marshal, there. This is even more serious than I thought. I don't understand the word you're saying, Joel. But I should be mightily obliged if you would explain. What's so serious? The marshal being out of camp. My friend, <laughs> if you're a marshal, you don't have to ask permission. It would be a good deal more serious if our ammunition remained in the mud. And 50 miles away. It may yet remain there, and the marshal with it if something is not done quickly. Who is in charge while he is away? A thunderhead by the name of Marmont. A stupid pudding of a man with no initiative and less brains. Then he is no good to me. I need a man with courage, initiative, and imagination. My friend, you are looking at such a one. Cliché, the brave captain of the bombardiers. A man with brains and knowledge of the world. <laughs> you said yourself, good things come in small parcels. Tell me your troubles then, and see what schemes my lightning brain can devise. I will have to explain properly later, but I will give you the facts briefly. I'm listening, with ears and senses alert. Speak, friend, for Fouquet listens. These... Ammunition wagons stranded on the Vosges Road are attended by about 30 dragoons, I believe. About that number. That is not very many, should they be attacked. Who would attack them? We are keeping my Lord Duke's men fully occupied here at Freiburg. And Charles of the Rain alone, though I hear he has the courage of a lion, would not attempt to argue with 30 dragoons and a wagon of ammunition. Duke Charles has found another army. Upwards of 8,000 men. What? Deserters, mostly. Mercenaries without work, since peace is to be signed by His Majesty at Nimbagan. They have gathered at Oppenau, whence the Duke of Lorraine will march them under his colors. Death of my life. You're a fount of information. How do you know all this? Who told you peace was to be signed? Are you in Louis' confidence? And the Duke of Lorraine's also? The sword of my noble father. I find it difficult to believe these things. Yet believe them you must, for they are true. The Duke's intention is to cut off the ammunition wagons first and then descend upon our armies at Freiburg. And when is he to do all this? He anticipates being in Freiburg by Friday. The man's a fool. A crazy madman led by dreams and hallucinations. Friday. It would not be difficult having disposed of the men and the ammunition. And the marshal, too, it seems, though that wasn't in the original plan. Frique, I must put this information before this man, Marmond. My trusting friend, I, who love you as a brother, find it difficult to believe these revelations. Marmond, whose brain is a vacuum, and whose thoughts run slower than treacle on the cold day. My mind would not even listen. Well, well, well. 
Then I must do something myself. Aha. Now you're talking. Maman, Maman, he's an oaf. An oaf with a head stuffed with sawdust. But you and I, Joel, we can do anything. Where shall we start? We will need more than just the two of us. If you wish to get out of camp without letting Marmont know, you can't take too many. If we took a couple from different corps, they could apply for leave to their various captains. Yes, yes. Then, you see, we could meet outside the camp, beyond the sentry, and no one would be the wiser. We do not need very many, just a few men of courage. Stout-hearted and true. If we get through to the wagons before they are attacked by the Duke, we can warn them. And if the rebel prince and his partisans get there ahead of us... Then we will take a leaf from their own book and cut them off. They are mercenaries. They will not stand to be attacked from both sides. Mercenaries? How I long to take a shot at them. Bring me my horse. Where is my sword? Let's go. Quietly now, quietly. We don't want to wake the whole camp. Show me where I may find Monsieur Ecrivo. He will come with us, I know. And what of the cavalrymen with whom we worked this afternoon? Cavalrymen? A plague upon the lot of them. They are good soldiers, Frique, and we shall need horses. Besides, you said yourself we must take a few from each unit so that we may be able to get beyond the sentries without causing suspicion. You are right. I will speak to them. Get me 40 good men, Frique, and we will put Monsieur Le Duke to rout. But mark that they are men of high courage and dauntless. If 40 of us had to cut off an army of 8,000, they will need to be. Not only for that, but though I am new to soldiering, I understand such an adventure as we now plan would be looked upon coldly by the authorities. We should be court-martialed at least, for we've been ordered to remain in camp here. So, it will be direct disobedience then to orders, and the penalty for that is death. Death? To be killed by an enemy bullet, that is one thing. To die by the sword, but to be caught, marshaled, and shot. I will put my case to Marmon before we do anything rash. By all means, but it will be useless, I tell you now. Um, there is no other way. Caught, marshaled, and shot. No, I don't like the thought. The lives of 30 dragoons, Marshal Craigie himself, and the fate of Freiburg depend upon this. Caught Marshal. Oh, a feat to such nonsense. A man may as well die one way as another. I'm with you, friend. Good, Frique. And I'll find you others of the same mind. Brave men and true. Go your way now. The flannel brain Marmond lives over there. See what you can do with him while I find your band of adventurers. We'll meet tonight by Dupont's farm and ride together to the Vosges. And adventure. Meanwhile, in the Vosges Mountains, the ammunition wagons destined for the army outside Freiburg are stuck fast in the mud. Spread along the road, the dark shapes of the wagons look like prehistoric monsters caught in the thick black ooze. Beside them, near the trees, the tents that house the 30 dragoons and Marshal Crecy. Still further away, the horses hobbled and moving quietly in the darkness. It is dark and silent. Except for a light in one tent, where Marshal Crecy sits with Captain Gordon, poring over the map laid out between them. Even if you took the wagons back the way you came, Captain Gordon. There is no other road that would take you into Freiburg. If there were, Marshal, I should be glad to take it. But even so, we still have to get out of the mud before we can move either way. Yes, 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 of course. But tomorrow you will unload the wagons and then try again. As you say, Marshal, but it will not be easy. You saw for yourself the road is like a bog for many miles ahead. And it's likely to get stuck again further along. If you can get but a mile or so ahead, you can uh, turn off here. Hmm. You, you see where I point on the map? And make your way up through here. Uh, doubling back again to Freiburg. It will take some time. Time fights on our side at present. All our enemy are bottled up in Freiburg. We have but to wait. 
He has no other army since those stacked Eisenach and Leopold have disappointed him. It makes our task easier, too, Marshal. But if we had to watch out for attacks by the enemy, we'd have less time to dig ourselves out. As it is, we keep the two sentries posted and feel ourselves safe. What was that? Oh, it seems uh, so too soon. Uh, we are attacked. We are surrounded there among the trees, hundreds of them, across the road in front of us. What men can these be? They bear the colors of the Duke of Lorraine. Impossible. It cannot be so. Where could he raise another army? The forests are full of deserters, my lord. But we will be taken without a doubt. We are hopelessly outnumbered. I'll go out to my men and see what can be done. I'll report back to you in a moment, Sergeant. I'll come with you. No, no, stay where you are. You're as much under cover as possible here, for you have the mountain rock behind you. But be careful. I'm responsible for your safety. I'll be back. Monsieur, you can see from here. Look. Stand here where you are covered by the bushes and yet are high enough up to command a good view. Captain Gurton is placing his men well around the wagons. They're well covered there. You can see what they are doing. An ammunition wagon is not the cover I choose in a fight. A soldier must make the best of what he has. You are right. They're all around us and closing up. You take it. Where did that man acquire such an army? I saw one of them fall. Oh. I'll take my oath. They are no regular army. Mercenaries, I guess. Here's Captain Gordor coming back now. Oh, how goes it, Captain? Oh. I shall try to get you away safely if it's humanly possible. You can see how it outnumbered them. If we could hold out long enough, perhaps word could be sent back to my camp at Dreiberg. It's our only hope. And a splendor one of that. Yes, we must try it. But you look where the road rises behind there. Why that clear patch? Do you see anything there? Where? Where? I, I cannot see very well. What is it? I can see what you mean. Figures, horses moving this way. Oh, this is the end for the lot of us. They're bringing up cavalry reinforcements. The Silver Marshal, this is goodbye to your ammunition. And us with it. Thank <laughs> you.